In this video, we'll talk more about how to create an actual outline. Once again, we'll take a creative approach. Most of us probably did not have as much creativity in writing outlines. We studied a five-part essay with an introduction body conclusion with three main points and probably three subpoints. However, this is not the only method that works. In our last video, we talked about how you could actually tear a piece of paper into threes as shown here using the middle part as the body of the speech and tearing it again into three main points. This was Essie's three main points to why a comb best represents her. She came up with merely just three ideas. And then you can just take one idea and tear it up again, the second tear that up, and the third tear that up. In a way, this becomes a discrete process and a little easier to work with. Now what we're going to do is to put this in an outline. Okay, so now that we've written out the different parts of the speech on your whiteboards, all you need to do is add the different parts of your speech to the labels. So, your attention device, let's go ahead and, what was yours, Essie? We'll um, use yours as an example. Combing my hair. Okay, so what are you going to do for attention getting device? I'm going to comb my hair. Okay, um, next is the tie to the audience, and this is where you guys are going to go ahead and tell the audience why they should care. Okay, so... Let's see. I think I got a mix up. Okay. Oh, okay, so my tie to the audience is going to be, um, like, does your hair ever get in tangles or... Um, I'm sure everybody had some mats. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Put that down next to there. Um, the next part is the credibility. And this is probably the hardest part for a speech like this because if you're giving an informative speech, it's going to be a little easier. You can say, you know, I've studied this or I've done this or I've been there. And for this, it oftentimes, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you about me because I know about me. But what do you have for your credibility? Um, that I want to be a beautician and I've wanted to since I was a little girl. Oh, good. Okay. And how about finally a thesis? Um, my yes, 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 uh, like this comb, I like to help straighten, um, and sh straighten and shine things up and get through the snarls, and I enjoy working with people's hair. Okay, great. Good start for your draft. And next, we're going to go ahead and work on the body. Now, remember we talked about the A, the B, and the C are all the main parts of the speech. So these are the primary pieces that are going to go back to the thesis that share about who you are and it all ties to the thesis. So what did you have for main point one? Um, my main point is... Is that the one where you're like... Yeah, it helps people shine and okay. straighten things. Okay, and so go ahead and put that down. So you would go ahead and we'll work on the final drafts um, tomorrow. but. Yep, exactly. So you're going to go ahead and list your three main points, or I mean, I'm sorry, your three, three sub points, and then your main point. And your second main point is? Um, that, oh, it untangles things. Okay. I like to untangle things. Okay, and then you describe the different ways that you untangle things. Okay. So do you see how sub points are explaining your main points? Sometimes people find that, let's say, for example, you start writing this speech, and you have all this about how you untangle things, and you find that you have so much it's already five minutes, it may be that that's actually the, the speech. So sometimes your subpoints are so well developed, they're so interesting, that that actually is the speech, and the other parts of your speech are not even important as far as the main points. So you want to be able to play with this a little bit. It's kind of like building it up and bringing it down. You know, it's even... Uh, like, I don't know, sculpting something or making a, a pot. You never know what it's going to be until it's the end. Um, what's your third main point? Um, how it represents what I want to do when I get older. Okay, great. You have the three reasons there. Right. Now, you can see where we went throughout <coughs> from actually brainstorming your ideas to putting it into paper and tearing it up. And we talked about the different parts of the speech. And now we're going ahead and we're taking your ideas and putting it back into this, this format. Um, when you're done with your speech and you actually type this up at home, you're going to add your transitions. And do you remember, Naomi, what a transition is? Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next um, section. Right. So you would go ahead and preview, 
Right, it's a bridge. You would review what you've just said and preview what you're going into next. <coughs> so oftentimes a real simple would be now that you've heard about why um, it represents me, let me tell you how it represents my future. Okay, now finally the last part is your conclusion. And the brake light is the first part of the conclusion. And sometimes people use a really boring one such as in conclusion, but it shows you that you're about to end. What do you have for yours, Essie? Um, now that I have straightened you out and we've made it through the tangles, dot, dot, dot. Great, great. And I like how you did that. Um, you can have some fun with it with the delivery, and it's perfect. The next is your review. Um, I've shared three reasons why this comb represents me. Okay, and the last stuff. Great. And remember, you want your review and your preview to be mirror images and it should follow through the same way. And I heard you say earlier that it just sounds kind of redundant, like people might think it's just, you know, you, I've already said this, I'm saying it again. But the truth is, is that people don't listen to you. And don't listen to your teacher, don't listen to your parents, don't listen to your friends. And it's a way to tell them what you're going to tell them in the preview, tell them in the body, and then you review, you tell them once again. And I know it's redundant, but it's actually helping people to keep a mental outline about what you're talking about and helps them. The last part, um, let's see, you have tie back to the audience. Mm, I hope uh, you know more about me and see how this comb represents me. Okay, and then finally a memorable end. Um, when you have a bad hair day, you know you can call me. Great. So what you have here is a full speech, and all we did was tear up a piece of paper and then put it back together like glue. And as we talked earlier, um, sometimes this works for people, sometimes it doesn't. But when you work with something in this tearing process, it's actually a kinesthetic learning process. And for some people, it's so nerve-wracking thinking about writing a speech that they can't actually write it, that they can't actually sit down and put it on paper or type it. So doing something completely different, even like playing with Play-Doh and making three different objects that will represent you, that kinesthetic doing and touching and tactile sensation can actually help people to do better <coughs> who are more nervous, more apt to be that sort of kinesthetic learner, or just needing a different way to approach it. So this is one way that you can approach writing a speech. Um, there's many different ways. There really is no one, one right way. And again, the best way to start writing is to start writing. So now that you have your speech together, good luck practicing. Remember what you want to do there is write it out, practice, time it, cut it, add it, continue working with it, and um, move to some note cards, see how that works and keep practicing it. We'll talk about practice techniques next. See you guys. Thanks. Thanks. So we've moved from these ideas that we worked with as we tore paper apart, and we moved these same ideas into an outline. The outline also distinguishes the need to shine, to untangle, as well as representing the future. Now you can see that each of these main points were literally torn apart into three subpoints. The subpoints support the main points, and the main points support your overall thesis. So good luck in outlining.